Kids, I'm going to tell you an incredible story. A story of how I chose a camera. Are we being punished or something? <laughs> no. Yeah, is this going to take a while? Yes. I'm going to tell you a technical tale where we'll compare the dynamic range, noise, compositing, sharpness, and color reproduction qualities of Kodak Vision 3 500T 16mm film and the Blackmagic cinema camera. The technology used to capture films is becoming cheaper and more accessible, while the quality of imagery produced is improving. Amateur filmmakers are beginning to get their hands on pseudo-cinema-grade digital cameras that promise real, raw workflows. Companies like Blackmagic and Digital Bolex are offering cameras at an affordable pay grade below the rental divide. Many new filmmakers are excited to switch without sufficient evidence to back up their purchase. While some prefer the reassurance that comes with having their own personal camera always by their side, they do not always consider workflow and image quality brought out by these cheaper cinema cameras. It seems that in recent years, the camera industry has become all about brand appeal and people are neglecting the technical specifications. This camera comparison will deduce how the Blackmagic stacks up against the Vision 3 500T 16mm film using an Arri SR3 with the intention of determining whether or not the Blackmagic should be considered a serious player in the professional data cam marketplace. The Blackmagic was chosen for this technical shootout because of its low cost, impressive specs, and current industry standing. As many filmmakers are getting their hands on the Blackmagic camera, it seems fitting to examine how well it stacks up with tried and true film. The Vision 3 500T 16mm film was picked to be the Blackmagic's nemesis for this experiment. This film stock was used on professional films such as Super 8 and Argo. The sensor size of the Blackmagic is close to the frame size of 16mm, and this will make the two imagers suitable for comparison. Take a look at the scene here. Using the background wall as our normal exposure, we have items on the table that are lit up to 8 stops over normal, and fall off in the shadows to as low as minus 6.3 stops from normal. Our talent moves across the frame to provide a subjective assessment of facial details under different exposure conditions. Here, we compare each camera's reproduction of the scene side by side at normal exposure. In the film's reproduction, the items on the table are fairly distinguishable. When captured with the black magic, all of the image content on the table is clipped and blown out. The shadows, however, retain greater detail with the black magic than with the film. While not perfect, the sweater and pillow under the table are visible only when shot with the black magic. In order to see if detail could be recovered in the shadows and preserved in the highlights, the image was overexposed by two stops. When overexposed, the film is able to maintain the highlight information on the table, and each item is clearly visible. The shadows, however, are clearly crushed and the scene is barely visible. In the black magic footage, the highlights are largely clipped, and the objects on the table are no longer distinct. However, the extended range into the shadows has enabled us to clearly see the talent under the table. To test the other end of dynamic range, we have exposed to minus two stops. In this footage, we look to the preservation of shadow detail and the recovery of highlight information. In the film's footage, the shadows are crushed as expected, and the highlight detail on the table is approaching a proper exposure. The black magic, however, was unable to recover highlight detail and is still clipped, but maintains elements in the shadows like the chair. Here we can see the noise performance of both systems. The film clearly has more visible noise in comparison to the black magic. This is largely due to the 16mm format, it would be less prevalent on 35mm stock. The telecine transfer process can be another source of noise, however its impact is negligible. Though the black magic is clearly superior in this test, the criterion still lies in the aesthetic preference of the director. Film and digital capture have fundamentally different workflows. The raw digital workflow is more familiar to students, where a raw image is captured in linear space and must be color corrected to appear aesthetically accurate and fit into video standards. Film follows a more complicated workflow, where the image is captured and then it must be developed to produce a recoverable image. This image is similarly low contrast, like the raw digital footage. With the developed film, in order for it to be transferred into a digital space, it must be scanned. The scanning is completed by a telecine. 
which scans the footage directly into video standard. Due to this, a skilled colorist must decide on an aesthetic intent of the film before it's scanned. This process was completed at a local Kodak facility, where a professional colorist worked under our direction to grade the film. The raw digital footage was then graded in-house to match the film's rendering. The Blackmagic footage seen here produces accurate colors in the midtones and highlights, with memory colors presented by the held objects holding true to the real counterparts. Flesh tones are accurate and aesthetically pleasing across all tonalities. However, the shadows have a noticeable red cast, which is clearly visible when compared to the Vision 3 film. This is very likely due to the sensor's well-known IR spill. The following clip is from a student film. The scene was shot outside on a bright winter's day using the Blackmagic camera. The actor appears to be wearing a red hat, scarf, and vest, but in reality, these articles of clothing are actually black. This false coloring was due to the lack of an infrared filter in the camera, allowing invisible light to activate the red pixels in the camera. We attempted to reproduce these results in the studio, but were unsuccessful. Filmmakers considering shooting on the black magic should be aware of this potential problem. In this comparison, we can see that the Vision 3's warm reproduction of skin tones and increased saturation. The Vision 3's grain is also visible in large uniform areas of the wall. When viewed on its own, the Vision 3's color reproduction is warm and saturated with deep blacks. The memory colors shown by the held objects, while being more saturated, still hold strong resemblance to their real counterparts. In this side-by-side -side comparison of Macbeth color checker charts, we can clearly see the differences in color performance between the two cameras. Overall, the Vision 3 is more saturated and has greater contrast. The Blackmagic's color is more muted, with poor shadow performance. The red spill into the shadows can be clearly seen here, though the mid-tone and highlight tone scale is accurately reproduced. Another important workflow consideration is the ease of compositability of chroma keyed shots. Here we consider two scenes, one of objects and the other of talent. Beginning with the Kodak film stock, a fast amateur composite was relatively unsuccessful at removing the green background, especially at high frequency areas like the black brush and the mohawk on the duck. This is likely due to the natural grainy characteristic of the film, directly impacting the cleanliness of the composite. An attempt to composite talent with the film stock was also unsuccessful. The graininess, particularly around edges of figures, renders a distortion between foreground and background elements that makes a simple composite distracting and undesirable. When shot with the black magic, however, it was much easier to render a clean composite. The higher resolution imagery produced by the raw workflow adds a sharpness benefit to the edges of the scene content allowing for a cleanlier composite in all areas except for the waving pom-pom. With little smoothing, the talent against the green screen was also more effectively composited with the black magic. Though a small amount of smoothing was applied, the edges between the subjects and the background are significantly cleaner here. The effort needed to effectively composite these shots is supported by the sharpness and modulation data obtained from the slant edge chart. A closer examination of patches 5 and 6 on the transferred film stock alias while patches 9 and 10 reveal no resolved edges whatsoever. It is important to understand that this lack of sharpness is not due to the film stock's resolving power, but is a culmination of sharpness reductions introduced by the entire system, from the film stock to the lens and the telecine. The sharpness reduction introduced by the telecine must be considered in most modern workflows. In the Black Magic's rendering of the slant edge chart, modulation is observable in all patches to some degree. However, chromatic aberration and color-related blurring introduces color aliasing most prominent in patch 4. The overall sharpness characteristics of the Blackmagic workflow, as is, triumphs over those of the transferred film stock. So in conclusion, the Kodak Vision 3 500T film stock has better overall dynamic range, more highlight detail, pleasing color reproduction, and that filmic look we've all come to know and love. While the Blackmagic Cinema camera has less noise, better sharpness, less aliasing, better shadow detail, and a simpler compositability than the film stock. Kids, it was a tough decision, but I ended up choosing to shoot on film. And that, kids, is how I chose a camera. That's it? That's it. No. That's not why you told us that entire story. Oh, really? Then what's the reason? It's obvious. You're totally in love with the black magic. You want to make the switch to digital, and you want to know if we're okay with it. I can't believe this. 
I kept the story short and to the point and you guys still missed it. The point of the story is... Is that you're totally, totally, totally in love with the black magic. Well, you're grounded. Man, you're really in love with the black magic. And you're grounded too. Okay, so perhaps I was a bit interested in the black magic. It's not like I chewed anything on it. But Dad, you love the black magic. Every time you shoot a project with it, you're in awe of its shadow detail, raw workflow, and sharpness. Come on, Dad. Film's been dead for years now. It's time. <laughs>